great deal of respect for each other. In fact, three of Mallory's sons have played for bowl. The, the, the latest one is a freshman up there right now. So I'm, I think that that's where it's going to get down to. I'll tell you one thing. If you like old-fashioned, down-and-dirty trench football, that'll be one of the great ones. One yes, it will. They, they coach a lot of life. <laughs> All right. Let's see if Ohio State can find something here to get them going. So far, the Indiana defensive people have just slapped their ears back. Bobby Olive, however, has been a very exciting kick returner so far. He's had a couple of good runs today. He's deep now for Ohio State with Scotty Graham. Olive is a young sophomore at 155 pounds from Atlanta, Georgia. Stoyanovich with a little wind at his back will knock this one way back there. No return. And right now, here's Al Trafwick. Fifth-ranked Notre Dame got off to a slow start. Darnell Dickerson for Reggie Williams, 42 yards. Pitt led 7-0. But right after that, Tony Rice on a keeper across the goal line. It's tied in Pittsburgh. That's a stop that Notre Dame needs to be careful about. Yes, sir. Pitt's kind of an up-and-down team themselves. Ohio State has been good one week and awful the next week. And John yesterday and talking to him said, I don't know what... What's the world's going on? But we will find our way, and uh, they will. I've known that man too long. First down for the Ducks at the 20. The tailback, Bryant, looking for some running room, finds uh, about eight yards worth up to about the 28 yard line. Walt Harris, 265 pound senior from Detroit, the tackle for Indiana. They've got good size up front, but not terribly big, and they're down three. 265, Bauer 255, and Schlereth at 255. But they're pretty quick. And the backers, the four backers for Indiana, just, just swarm you. They'll take the shirt right off your back. Fullback this time, Matlock carries and will have the first down. Out across the 30 at the 31. Matlock, a senior who stayed home in Columbus to play. Terry Saunders brought him down. This is the first year at Ohio State for John Cooper. And any time you come in, especially coming into a program that has run a great deal, it's tough to put in drop back passing. And that has been one of the problems teaching the offensive line and the backs the new system that uh, John Cooper brought to uh, Ohio State. Bryant, stung by two interceptions, hands the ball to Bryant. Bryant is taken down at the line of scrimmage. But in, in, in reality, Bob, in, in knowing John Cooper, now John believes the same thing that Bill Mallory believes. Field position, kicking game, and defense, because if anybody's read Nealon's book, uh, at all, uh, Cooper certainly had. Well, the cupboard wasn't bare at Ohio State, but they had some problems. Both starting wide receivers from last year uh, were academically ineligible. Vince Workman signed with an agent. He was their leading rusher and second leading receiver from last year. He is ineligible. And they've had other problems, injuries. Hicks hurt, Snow hurt, and this is Bryant. And Bryant working over the right side gets out across the 35 near the 36 yard line next week our ball games will have washington and southern california the huskies gave the ucla bruins all they wanted in seattle last week and leading arizona state this week michigan will, and iowa will be seen in some sections of the country and that ball game is going to be down in iowa city i was another team that snaked it this year hayden fry said heck we got folks who sprained ankles getting off the bus Get the uh, ankle, ankle disease over there. It is third down and six now for Ohio State. Fry trying to find a little better luck in his passing game. That is incomplete, intended this time for Jeff Graham and broken up by Brad Money. He had him as soon as he made his break, decided to wait for the middle, and by that time, Money covered him. Well, Ohio State. Aside from the other problems that we have new system and young players, whenever you have inexperience at the skill positions, as you do at the quarterback and wide receiver, it's going to be tough to get things done. There are 10 Hoosiers up there. They're going after Jeff Bowman, who is not particularly quick in getting his punts off, but that time he does, and he gets off a very good kick. And it's taken by Tony Buford, who can break them big sometimes. He comes back to the 34-yard line. 
So that's good coverage that time for the Buckeyes at 7 8 to go in the first half. A little light cloud now moving. Nothing. <laughs> the Indiana Hoosiers leading Ohio State. It was almost a startling thing to realize that coming back to this ball game that Ohio State was a definite underdog. That in itself made quite a story around here. I think the guys who wrote about it all week, didn't, they couldn't believe it themselves. This is Anthony Thompson trying, trying, trying and not getting anything out of it. Here's Mike. Coach Bill Mallory told his troops in the locker room before the game was play with pride, play with a lot of feeling, and take advantage of the 12th man. He said, jump on the Buckeyes early, and this crowd will really get behind you. And so far, you know, over 50,000 fans here in Memorial Stadium have done just that. They haven't shut up. 21-0. It's obvious. Yes, it is. They? <laughs> <laughs> they follow directions well, don't they? All right, Dave Schnell on second down and nine. Dobson underneath. It goes to Anthony Thompson out of the backfield, and he's going to have a first down up at the 45-yard line. Bill Mallory right now with a 21-0 lead is going to play this kind of football. He's going to run it and, uh, until they force him to throw it, and then once in a great while, he'll come up and throw it on first down, and it's like getting snake bit when he does it. Well, that was a good possession throw. Uh, George Ballou, the offensive coordinator at Indiana, said we would need to get the ball to Anthony Thompson a little bit more out of the backfield throwing it. <laughs> Bad news for uh, Ohio State. Schnell now goes to the first down pass play, and it is incomplete, intended for the tight end. Tim Jordan. Jordan's a good one at 6'3", 235, but that pass was simply too high. Couldn't reach it. And so it'll bring up third down at about two, uh, about nine, with 6.05 to play in the first half. Some of the games in the East now having been completed, and there have already been a bunch of surprises today. It'll be second down, and uh, it looks like 10, really. And on second down, they go back to the run with Thompson weaving his way. And he's one of those kind of backs that you get a hold of it, and then with that one last surge, he'll get that one more yard. And he has now gone over 100 yards. 18 carries, 106 yards in the first half. Well, that's the 15th time in his career. He's only a junior, and he has gone over 100 yards. He came into this game as the number two rusher uh, in the NCAA statistics. Uh, I'd like to be thrown to that. I mean, coming out of the backfield, getting the ball, open field, broken field, uh, he's quite a threat. Now it is third and four, a long four. Just over midfield for Indiana. Out of the shotgun, Snell. They get some pressure on him, but he gets it off, and the pass is caught. Good for a first down by Thompson out of the backfield. Zach Dumas brought him down for the Buckeye. On the reception, Schnell to Andre. So it's the Anthony Thompson show right now. The Anthony Thompson show is right. Schnell, number 11, has good protection. Gets outside the, uh, the rush. Schnell is 6 of 8 with, uh, for 96 yards. Had one bad game against Missouri, where that's the only game that uh, they have uh, not won. It was a tie for him. And they just sort of mistaked themselves into yeah. dropping the ball. Yeah. Schnell, bootleg, pass down the middle. Great catch by Jordan. Told you he was a good one. You got a guy that big, that agile, with hands like that, he's a big target. Well, he weighs 235, and he is the holder for extra points and field goals. That tells you he must have pretty good hands, and he knows when he's open. He's kind of hanging, but yet stays away from the defensive back. That was a tough throw and a very good catch. And it's first down, Indiana at the Ohio State, 25. Snell keeping it on the option. Turns the corner, knocked out of bounds at the 19. And the clock shows four and a half minutes to go in the first half. This is Pork Day at the campus and the ball game. 
here at Indiana University. So I feel right at home. <laughs> Did you have some on the way in? <laughs> I'll tell you what, we're going to lose a lot of this crowd in the second half. They go out to, uh, if Indiana keeps scoring, they're going to go out for more pork. <laughs> Just inside the 20. Second down and about four. Big surge by the offensive front. Cal Miller, the fullback. And it looks like another IU first down. Schrader, Ratke, Simons, Fryer, and Vargo. That offensive front continues to push back the, offense, the defensive line for Ohio State. Well, at first down, the back of the ball just touching the 15. Looks like he's hit right at the line of scrimmage, but he wiggles around and he picks up close to four yards on the carry. Tonight, baseball continues. Boddicker and Wilkes. The pitchers for tonight's ball game at West. Call it second down and short seven. Go back to Thompson. And Thompson is inside the 10 to the eight-yard line. Don Schrader, number 77. He is the offensive captain and the leader of that offensive line. Watch him as he pulls. It was all Big Ten last year. It's a little help from his fullback. He and the other guard, uh, Ratke, came into IU together. We're roommates, just thrown together as roommates. They look alike. They uh, always uh, are with each other. They call them the twins. They get in trouble together. They're the practical jokers of that ball club. Third and two, and Gene Boyd is now in at fullback. For the Hoosiers, but they give it a guess who. Thompson, he's got it first down at the three, first and goal. 258 total offensive yards for Indiana here in the first half, only 63 for Ohio State. And they're playing their strong suit. That's their offensive line. Thompson running in behind it, doing an outstanding job. And... Uh, you know, I was talking with Bill Mallory yesterday, and I said, you know, you've got 16 senior starters out of your first uh, 22 on offense and defense, so what are you going to do next year? He says, I don't want to think about that yet. He worked long and hard to get to this position here. Ball is on the three, and Ohio State has called a timeout. So apparently one of the Buckeyes shaken up with two and a half minutes to go in the first half. The Heartbeat of America. Today, Chevrolet. And by UPS. We deliver to every address in the U.S. and to 41 countries worldwide. Frankly, I wouldn't have guessed that we might see Anthony Thompson break Jade Butcher's career scoring record or touchdown mark this early in the ballgame. But we may see it right here. He's got three already. And I'll be surprised if he doesn't get the ball here. First and goal at the three. There goes Thompson, and they get him this time. A yard short of the line of scrimmage, and John Kosherski, the big sophomore for Ohio State out of Riverhead, New York, makes the first hit on him. So he lost a yard. That's an upset in itself. <laughs> It looked like he tried to go outside. Ratke, the left guard, was pulling out as you take a look at McCray as a groin pull going to the uh, to the locker room. Seen that walk a lot. I had it a few times myself, and it's one of the... Oh, it hurts. Oof. Here's Thompson again. He's got the touchdown. New career touchdown record for Anthony Thompson. Season and career. Thompson came into the game averaging 158 yards a game. As he just plows into the end zone. He may get that in the first half. Watch Jordan, 86, as he just gets a standoff with the defensive man. And when you get that, and you have a strong runner like Thompson, and just head up inside and get a couple yards, and he did. Gordon holds Stojanovic's kicks. 
He's got it. At 149, the play in the first half. Indiana is dominating Ohio State in a football game like never before. And you don't think they're not excited about their football team around here? Well, last night, in the shadows of evening, that rally downtown, the mayor, the commissioners, the councilmen, and the football team, and Coach Bill Mallory jumping up and down, crunching Buckeye. <laughs> Utterly dominant, Indiana leading 28 to nothing with a minute and 49 to go, and I was taken by this sign. Double Norwegians, I'll see you in Lillehammer. <laughs> oh, me. Lillehammer was an upset, too. <laughs> Bobby Olive and uh, Scotty Graham are the deep people for Ohio State. Bobby's the little fella. Graham, a big fella, 215. Pete Stoyanovich, a senior from Dearborn Heights, Michigan, will kick it off. Boy, he can nail it, give him no wind or a little behind his back. No return on that one. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. That'll begin at 9, 9 o'clock Eastern time next Monday on ABC. You mentioned oh. Stojanovic kicking that ball almost out of the end zone. Coming into the game, he had kicked off 21 times and only once had the receiving team got the ball back out past the 20 yard line. And over half of those kicks were out of the end zone. So Stojanovic, an outstanding uh, kicker. Ohio State first half possessions, first and third possession were intercepted. The other two were punts, not much to uh, write home about there. The factor of poise rears itself here for Ohio State. Round 28 nothing. Greg Fry is 0 for 4 in passing. He's been intercepted twice. John Bryant. About four yards. Not John Bryant. James Bryant. Scores and highlights with Al Troutwig at halftime on the Prudential halftime report. James Bryant is a, he's a junior. He's a tailback at 220 pounds, but he does not have the quickness. As far as pure speed, he may be pretty close to Snow, but he does not have the quickness. Well, he was fourth string coming into uh, right. small practice, too, and because of injuries, he's been forced to, uh, to go. Second down and six. They work it out of the shotgun, get the ball away to Bill Matlock, the fullback. And trying a bit of gimmickry, will get the ball up across the 30, what, what appears to be a first down. And here's Mike Adamley. Keith, 28-0 Indiana, shades of 1967 in that Indiana Rose Bowl team. What are the halfbacks? John Eisenbacher, the halfback, the fullback, Terry Cole. John, uh, this got to bring back some nice memories. Well, I just, uh, I don't know if I can make this football team now, Mike, the way they're playing with Anthony Thompson around their way. Look, looks like an awful good squad. And Terry, you're getting a vicarious experience. I know you got a redshirt freshman. As your son Toby is on this team as well. Absolutely. I'm so proud to still be involved with this football team. 28 to nothing. Who'd have thought it at halftime? Gentlemen, good to see you both. And I know uh, you want to wish Bob Greasy hello. He is one of my old competitors from Purdue. Okay, Robert. <laughs> Terry Cole, when I was at Purdue, I recruited Terry Cole. He was about a, as big as a senior in high school as he is now, which is about 6'2 and 235, and I was the guy trying to recruit Terry Cole to Purdue. Got to be good friends with him, but he went to IU and, and then later played with the Dolphins. Tough day so far for young Greg Fry. On second down and 10. That's James Bryant, a couple of yards. Well, you hooked up one time and a ball come loose for a moment, did it? A little scuffling around, but you hooked up with Jim Finley for an 80-yarder. That's still in the record books against uh, IU. Against IU, that's correct, but um, Jim Finley was a, was not a fast receiver. It's a lot like Buford that, uh, that's playing here at Indiana. It's, it had good, good uh, moves, possession receiver, but not a lot of speed, but... Uh, Purdue went to the Rose Bowl, played in the Rose Bowl game in 1967. Indiana went the following year, 1968, and that's the first two times and the only two times these two Indiana schools had gone. First half is over. So Ohio State, being very deliberate, let the clock run out. They had 14 seconds when they went to the huddle, and they chose to go to the clubhouse, trailing 28 
Good up. What's the secret to pop? Seventeen to five. Of course, 267 yards of total offense, and 194 of that for Indiana has been on the ground. Set a record for rushing yardage last week against Northwestern, and they rushed for 474 yards on the ground. John Cooper is not a happy person. He's beefing at the officials right now. The crowd is 52,133 at Hoosier Stadium today. And it's mostly red. It's all red. <laughs> Whether you were for Ohio State or for Indiana. All right. Greg Fry, who's had no luck at all in this ball game, hands off to James Bryant, the tailback. James is up to about the 24 before Willie Bates brings him down. There's another look at the first half possessions for Ohio State. They didn't get anything done. Two interceptions led to touchdowns. There's not much you can say when you go in the locker room. Uh, I'm sure John Cooper came out. He wasn't very happy. We saw a shot him just a second ago. Second down and six for the Buckeyes. Fry rolls it out, keeps it. Pretty good little move there to get a first down up around the 31-yard line. He wanted to go to the sidelines. He had uh, Bernard Edwards over there, but Edwards is sandwiched by a couple of uh, Hoosier defenders, and Fry tucked it down and picked up the first down. Joe Novak is the defensive coordinator for the Hoosiers, and he told me yesterday that the one thing he wanted to do to Fry today was mix the coverages and and uh, not give him the same read every time. He wanted to pressure the quarterback and mix the coverages. They're doing a good job of it. They get to 32. And the handoff goes to Bryant again. Gain on the play, seven yards to the 39. Willie Bates again the tackle for Indiana. John Cooper, eight years at Tulsa with a record of 57 and 31. Three years at Arizona State, 25, 9, and 2, including a Rose Bowl victory in 1986. He played at Iowa State, came out of Powell, Tennessee. That's at home, but he was trained by some good ones, including Tommy Profro. He's on that Pepper Rogers staff in Kansas, went to the Orange Bowl. Second down and three. And the Buckeyes are going to be a little short of the first down as Matt Locke, the fullback, carries. And big Brad Money, number 53, made the tackle. Money is a two-time All-Big Ten academic team. He was the uh, one of those uh, awards in 1986 and 87. And again, another one of those seniors on that defensive unit for the Hoosiers. One of the things that uh, Cooper's doing here, he's trying to get something, anything to get his football team moving. 
I'm sure you're probably wondering why in the world aren't they throwing the ball? They're down 28 nothing. Well, they haven't been able to throw the ball so far. And they're not going to throw it with any success, I don't think, until they start running it a little better. And Matlock picks up the first down for the Buckeyes. Well, he told us yesterday, Cooper did, that he has got to start running the football. As we mentioned earlier, he has lost his top three running backs to injuries. And you just can't depend on a sophomore quarterback getting his first start this year and Greg Fry to come out and throw the football all over the lot. Well, they get their first down. Just over the 43. And Fry will throw on first down. No pressure on him. Down the middle it goes. It is thrown too high. It is intercepted. That is the third interception. And Eric Coleman has it. That ball was tipped three times before it finally fell into the arms of Coleman. Any one of three defensive players could have caught it, too, as you saw the frustration on John Cooper. This is a smart play for Ohio State. Get him out of the pocket. A little bit better protection. Now watch as the ball is, is it's a poorly thrown ball. Tipped once. Tipped twice there. The, the second man should have had it. And Cooper, uh, of all people, has a third opportunity to intercept the ball. So Greg Fry is 0 for 6, three interceptions, and his fundamentals are being tested right now. Emotion and character. Going to have to bowl his neck. This is Anthony Thompson, who has been the star of the day, and he picked up about 10 yards before Brown and Clark can bring him down. Thompson is having a big day, to be sure. He's running very well, to be sure. But I want to tell you, he's got four horses pulling his wagon. Yes, he does. At least four and sometimes five. There's Coleman, the young man that made the interception to give IU the ball. And it's second down and a half a yard near the Ohio State 44-yard line. Well, they don't have the first down there. Gene Boyd tried for it. Big back Sullivan in the nose guard position ate him up. Herman, 36, is a true freshman. 47, Rogan right there to the right is a true freshman. He's got three true freshmen in that defensive lineup now. Uh, of course, McCray, we saw hurt earlier in the, in the ball game, and Rogan is uh, the backup for him. But, uh, this is a pretty good defensive ball club last year. Chris Fieldman graduated, Kumaro graduated, and got to go with the young players. We go back to Thompson, he's got the first down, and Benson as he rumbles to the 31. Vince Clark's getting the workout. He again makes the tackle from his cornerback position. And Anthony Thompson is headed for 200 yards. Now look at the offensive line to the left side. 77 is Schrader. Look at the offensive line, the fullback with a nice block. Linebackers nowhere to be found. Just good tough running and good line blocking up front. We're putting up Anthony Thompson a lot. We should be putting up his offensive line and the fullbacks that are doing a great job blocking. Right. On first down, Dave Snell looks to throw it. Can't do it. He's brought down by pick number 96, Shreko Zisakovic from Western Ontario, Canada. Zizakovic. <laughs> Zizakovic. What kind of business is this? You make a big play and you get hauled out. Well, one thing about the Ohio State defense, besides being young, they do not have a lot of speed. And that is one thing that uh, John Cooper hopes to improve on in the years to come. Second down and now 14. Back to the run and Thompson. 31, which is the original line of scrimmage with Patrick Rogan bringing it down. Those Cowboys must be pretty good. You know that? I haven't seen it. Both teams undefeated going into that ball game. Oklahoma beating Texas. Bill Curry has got problems at Tuscaloosa. There's the other stunner in the SEC today. 
Florida State didn't have it easy with Eric Russell much either. They were leading going into that final quarter, or late in the third quarter, 10 to 7. Third down and 10. Out of the shotgun, Schnell lets it go deep. Down, but the offensive line picked up the blitz and gave him plenty of time to throw one on one coverage in the secondary. 31 yard play. Bojanovic to the point. Good. My goodness. What would Earl Bruce say about this one? With 8.53 to go in the third quarter, it's 35 0. Indiana. They've scored on five straight possessions. College library. That area there in front was where they ran the little 500 of the motion picture Break It Away. In that swamp? In that swamp, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, they made enough money to put in an arboretum. Yeah. <laughs> Dave Schnell, Schnell catching Ohio State blitzing burns him on a 31 yard pass play to Rob Turner. And the Hoosiers are out in front 35 to nothing. Stojanovic will now kick off. Bobby Olive and Mark Hicks are the deep people. I'd like to see Hicks get the ball just to see how well he's running. But Olive has been getting it most of the time and has turned in a couple of good runs. But Stojanovic, the last two times, has stuck it in the end zone with no return. And Olive just on up to the five, and here he comes. Oh, look at that move. And then knock him out of bounds right near the 20-yard line with 8 minutes and 48 seconds to go in the third quarter. And the folks wearing the Hoosier red are mighty happy. Paraphrasing the comment of Earl Bruce from a year ago about it being the darkest day in his memory at Ohio State when they lost 31-10 to Indiana. But they're simply being beaten today by a superior football team. Ain't no mysteries out there. It is first down for the Buckeyes at the 20. James Bryant. Yeah, that's a good run by James. Up across the 30, picks up 11 yards and gets a first down. For Ohio State, here's Mike Adamley. Well, you're pretty in here. <laughs> that was Archie. Archie and Mike looked awfully good. <laughs> Archie is now an associate athletic director at Ohio State in the fundraising business. Chat Speaking with him. Fundraising. Nice. I want to tell you about that 68 national championship bunch in a minute. What they have in mind. First down for the Buckeyes. And Greg Fry back to throw. Better let it go. Well, I'll tell you, he made completes it. That's his first completion of the day to Bernard Edwards. But he waited so long that he wound up throwing it into a crowd. That was a tough, tough completion for your first one of the day. That's why it's taken him all over two quarters. Take a look at Edwards. Edwards is 6'5", a lanky receiver. The inside man cleared. Now look at Ferry, 21. Ferry knew what the route was, came back to the inside, and almost got a piece of it. Good catch by Edwards. And it gives Ohio State a first down at the 48, and John Spencer is now in the ball game, a sophomore from St. Clairsville, Ohio. He's in the backfield at tailback, and Fry's going to throw it again and makes a second completion, this time to his tight end, Jeff Ellis. And the sophomore from Louisville will pick up another. Buckeye first down inside the 40 at the 39. That 1968 national championship team at the urging of Dr. Rex Kern. Remember Rex when he was a quarterback? Well, he has his Ph.D. He lives out in California. He called me last week, told me about uh, that 68 team pledging a million dollars 
for a scholarship for the old man and Ann, Woody and Ann Hayes. The scholarship fund will bear their name given by the team of 68. James Bryant back in at tailback carries for Ohio State. And it looks like the Buckeyes are going to have another first down. So really, for the first time today, they are generating some offense. Indiana may be relaxing just a little bit on defense, leading 35 to nothing. Well, I think the attitude you have on offense is, hey, we're getting blown out, embarrassed. Let's just go down and forget about winning. Let's just try and get some points on the board and save face. Pullback Matlock. That's a tough run of about five yards. Willie Bates gets another tackle for Indiana. And as we mentioned in the first half, if, if, our, if any viewers have just joined us, John Cooper just took over at Ohio State this year. His offensive system and his offensive coordinator, Jim Coletto, they like to throw the ball, drop back passing. Ohio State has not been used to that. Their offensive linemen, their backs, are not used to drop back passing. They're used to play action, sprint out stuff. It's going to take a while for that to kick in. Second down and five. Run it again. And it's Bryant. Bryant's a big guy, 220 pounds. And he tried to leverage his way inside the 20. He got to the 20, a yard short of the first down. He's carried 14 times now, and he has 78 yards. The other problem with uh, Ohio State this year, as we mentioned earlier, all new uh, people at their skill positions. Uh, Greg Fry took over for uh, Tom Cooper at the quarterback position. The wide receivers are soft sophomores. The uh, tailbacks are all young. It's tough to win when you got young people uh, doing the ball carrying. Third and two. Matt locked the fullback, and he's close to the first down. Illinois winning today over Purdue has been the surprise team. In conference play, they were boxed around pretty good a couple of times. John Makovic at Illinois are doing a nice well, job, huh? Well, I guess John was just trying to get him ready in time for the conference play, and uh, they went through three games and got bounced around, and but suddenly bounced up and won a ball game last week. The Ohio State. State yeah. Now today has beaten Purdue. On the 18 of Indiana, first down, Buckeyes. That's Jane, uh, Bill Matlock, the fullback. Not much. Hoosiers run to the ball very well. It'll be interesting to see Indiana against the big Michigan offensive front. The Indiana defensive people are really not that big, but they do have good quickness. They have quickness and they have experience. Uh, they are sound defensively. They don't do anything. It's not sound. They know where they're supposed to be. And as we mentioned, the thing that they have is they've got all those seniors, nine seniors on defense, and, and they know what's coming. Second down, long nine. Splitting the backs now, Bryant and Matlock. And Greg Fry to throw is going to get some heat. Gets it away to Matlock out of the backfield, and Bill is brought down short of the 10. As Bates gets another tackle, and USC's beating Oregon. Well, now, 21 to nothing. Washington was beating Arizona State, and we've got the Huskies and the Trojans next week as one of our two games, the other being one of considerable dimension in the Big Ten, Michigan at Iowa. I'll tell you right now, Southern California, for me, looks as good as anybody in the country. I don't know that. You've been voting for them all year. I thought they were a pretty good football team coming in. Third down and two. This is Bryant. And James has his first down. What I want to know is who's the other guy has been voting for SC? <laughs> <laughs> I see two votes. I know one's Keith Jackson. I don't know who the other one is. Well, they sold me when they just manhandled, physically manhandled UCLA in the final game a year ago. And they have not... I haven't changed my mind, and uh, they haven't changed their performance. Yeah, Larry Smith is doing a doing a nice job. But I tell you, I've been very impressed with with UCLA out there on the West Coast, and, and we did Washington, UCLA Washington up in uh, Seattle. Uh, Washington was a very tough team, gave UCLA everything they wanted. Ohio State now with another first down, first and goal, ball at the eight. Bryant tries to get it outside, and he can't do it. Firing through is Joe Huff. The big senior from Newburgh, Indiana. Huff was a walk-on 
walked onto the football team and lettered the first year that he walked on the on the ball club. He led the team in sacks last year. He's always around the ball, always making big plays. Not big, just makes plays. I think what we may see in this college season, Bob, as the year wears on, we may see more upsets because a lot of the freshmen mature rapidly between September and November. You may see a lot of teams get tough along around that 6, 7, 8 game. This is a touchdown for James Bryant. So the Buckeyes are on the board. And it comes with 2 minutes and 38 seconds to play in the third quarter. Ohio State just playing for some respect. Try to get back in this ball game. They probably can't win it, but get back into it where next week they can build some momentum offensively for next week. The extra point try by Pat O'Mara. The holder is Scott Powell. And the kick is good. So John Cooper now feeling slightly better about things. Late in the third quarter, his team has finally scored a touchdown. So the optimistic attitude that exists in and around Bloomington, Indiana, home of the IU Hoosiers. Indiana will play Minnesota here next week, while Ohio State will go back home to play Purdue. Actually, Indiana's big test is going to come on the 22nd against Michigan, and then they come home to Iowa. They play Illinois on the road, play Michigan State here. Pat O'Mara now with an unusual experience in today's game. He's going to kick off. Granderson, upside down he goes. Stop short of the 20. Number 55 made the hit on it. Stormy Warner. That's a good name for a freshman. Stormy. You're going to get beat. Every interception has been turned into a touchdown. Indiana's had the ball in six possessions today and has scored five touchdowns. All right, Indiana from the 18, first down. And it's Anthony Thompson. See him shake that first hit? He's tough. Just shook off Zach Dumas. Here's Al Trotwick. Keith, you mentioned Washington leads Arizona State. Here's the Vince Weathersby one-yard touchdown run that culminated a 76-yard drive to give Washington the 10-0 lead in the latter stages of the third quarter. Playing on grass down in Tempe. Saw a note, too, that Iowa is going to tear up the turf and go back to real grass. Well, that's Thank music you. to my ears. I love that. Only one team in the Big Ten plays on grass, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Second down and five. Thompson, no, nope, not. It's Cal Miller carrying that one. And uh, here comes Michael McRae back into the ballpark. Is not a happy scene. Very good player, and you got another Buckeye down on the field hurt. The team has been racked with injuries, and they are continuing. That looks like Derek McCready. Todd Barry, our spotter, Dave Burnson, our statistician. We lost Andy Gerd, who was an outstanding linebacker, inside linebacker, to injury this past week. He had sur surgery on his shoulder, and if they lose McCray, who uh, had a touchdown against uh, LSU, would be a big loss. What do you think of that matchup, Bob? I think the Eagles are playing very good this year. Uh, the Giants, of course, are on a roll. I think the two wins over the Redskins, uh, I think they're, they're going to be right there at the end, the Giants. Well, you've got a man over there on the Ohio State staff that they, the Buckeyes have been fooling around with that 46 defense, haven't they? Yes, they have. Uh, Buddy Ryan, of course, brought the 46 defense into the Bears, and now he's the head coach of the Eagles, but his son, Rob Ryan, is a graduate assistant for Ohio State. And, uh, in fact, as, as we look at uh, McCready going off the field, picture of him, uh, 
Rob Ryan brought some of that 46 defense of his dad to, to Ohio State, and they've used it some. It's a tough defense to run against. Third down and two for the Hoosiers. Mr. Cox. Oh, I don't know about this one. Buckeyes Orlando Craig rose up to smite him. Depends on the mark. That's short. Tom Bolliard will come in. The punt, All-American, junior college punter in 86. At one time, Tom Bolliard was on a football scholarship at Ohio State in 1985. Went off to J.C., wound up at Indiana. Averaged just under 44 so far this year. The backup quarterback for the Hoosiers and led Northeast Oklahoma to a national junior championship. That's a good punt, and it's the first one of the day, and it goes to Bobby Olive, who is forced into a fair catch back at the 27-yard line, a 46-yarder, and no return. The Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week, proudly sponsored by Honda, and this week's award goes to Rick Meyer, junior offensive guard from UCLA. He graded the highest among the offensive line of the Bruins, and UCLA has come from behind 24-17 win last week at Washington. Rick Meyer, major biology. Great point, 3.2. Last year, 3-8. Getting serious. James Bryant. Maybe a yard. Dan Bauer brought him down. Bobby Olive has been all over the field today. He's a walk-on, just a sophomore. He's 6'1 and 155 pounds. He was a high school, when he was a high school senior in Atlanta, he caught only three passes his senior year. The team was a run-oriented team. He was a basketball star, so averaged 26 points a game, but won in football. His father knew the trainer at Ohio State, called, he walked on, he says, I never let my size limit my dreams. He says, I've got the heart, and that's what it takes. We've got one quarter to go. Indiana is in control at 35 to 7. I think they closed the pork tent too soon. <laughs> I'll huff and I'll puff. <laughs> well, they don't. Uh, I guess uh, Washington is not the only uh, team that's uh, has got the corner on those noses. It is second down for Ohio State. And about eight at the 29-yard line. And Greg Fry looking to throw, gets it over the middle of the pass. Every pass he has thrown today, save one, has been behind the receiver. He's a little bit late. A little bit off. The team that jumps out at you, the three turnovers were turned into three touchdowns. And the total yardage, 382. Ohio State getting a lot of yardage on their last possession, which they went for a touchdown. And now out of the shotgun on third and eight. Gets Edwards and gets a first down on the completion at the 47-yard line. Of the top three wide receivers for Ohio State, two are redshirt freshmen, and the other two, the fourth one is a sophomore, so you got two sophomores and two redshirt freshmen. Edwards right there was a quarterback in high school. He's also got a couple of wideouts that are quarterbacks in high school. Yeah. I thought we'd see a reverse with a pass coming off of it, but they really haven't been in position. They got so far behind so early that they would have just moved right out. No use in doing it. Pull them yeah. out now. Save it. Don't blab them out like me tell them about they're going to use it. Well, we'll be surprised. Well, every team has those in their uh, in their package. They work on them every week, and there's some weeks they're better than others because of the defensive style of the team that you're playing. But everybody's got them. Second down and seven now for Ohio State. Just short of midfield. field. 
Who's your show blitz? Little backer can't get in. Flies passes away, and again it is thrown behind the receiver. All right, Hall of Famer. Why is he throwing that ball behind him? Well, he's not sure of the coverages that he's getting. As I mentioned, Joe Novak, the uh, the uh, coordinator for uh, Indiana, is doing a nice job of confusing him, mixing his mind. You see, he can't see to the right side there. He can't see that man coming in from the right side, and when you're not sure, you don't throw the ball as well. As you watch, you watch his ball. It's not a tight spiral. It's fluttering a little bit. There's a little bit of inconsistency, and you can see it in the way he throws the football. Third and seven. Who's a show blitz, but they don't come. And Fry has very, very good protection. Throws a bullet and gets a very difficult completion to Jeff Graham on the sideline. It'll be at the 35 of Indiana and another first down. Take a look at the defense from behind the defense. Fry with good protection here. All kinds of time. Stays in there well and throws the ball well. You see the tight spiral on the ball. He felt good when he threw it. I can I know from experience that when you when you're not sure of what you're doing, the ball doesn't sail too well, and you just take something off of it. But that's a nice catch, one foot in down. Oh, you got a flag on that one. Uh, almost an incidental bump, but interpreted differently by the beat official Brian DeWitt, the free safety. Had a bump with the receiver, Jeff Graham, going down the pipe on a post pattern. Yeah, I think it may have been more than a bump. Yeah, it knocked him down. DeWitts knew that he was beat. There you take a look at it. DeWitts used to be a quarterback. He uh, started, in fact, started five games at quarterback in 1986. He releases inside. Yeah, DeWitts knows he's beat and just tries to tackle him. He was the last line of defense, so that wasn't a That's bad idea. That's offensive thinking. See, you get that in these guys that play off. <laughs> Wits was a, a big play guy last year for Indiana. Had five interceptions and four fumble recoveries. And you'll see a lot of quarterbacks go to free safety. You know, it's yeah. kind of the quarterback of the defense. You can see everything yeah. back there. Penalty gives him a first down at the Indiana 20. Bryant, sweep right. And the form of the student body right is good for close to five yards as Brad Money brings it down number 53. Money has had a full day. He came in to the game, the third leading tackler on the Indiana team, and has been all over the field. What is it? Indiana has no player west of Missouri. They're all from this general region here. Second down. About five and a half. Here they come. Nope. Intended for Bernard Edwards, the 6'5 receiver out of Fort Myers, Florida. DeWitt was covering. I think he had the match that he wanted. He had a 6'5 receiver against the six-footer. The pass was too high. Yeah, you're right. And it was single coverage down there. There was a blitz on the play. Mark Ferry, the strong safety, was coming, and there was single coverage downfield if he could have just got him the ball. Those are things you learn from, though, Keith. Jim Coletto, the offensive coordinator, go back, run that play back and forth. He says, when you get a one-on-one -on -one down in the secondary and you've got time to throw it, you can't miss those. Third down. Carrying the ball, Scotty Graham to the 15, and that'll do it. There again was indecision because the ball was snapped to the quarterback and uh, Greg got to jumping around a little bit and was late getting well, the ball. He knew it was a court. draw and there were backs on either side and it looked like he started to get them to the wrong one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Yeah, it's a hard day for him. That happens. There'll be a better one. One of the things about college football that I've always found attractive is it's easy to tolerate somebody who's trying to do something. Yeah, and the next it. time you see him, you might knock your head off. Yeah. Fourth down, a long four. Brian turns to the referee and says, uh, 
The crowd is whipping me, and the folks can't hear me. And Jerry Hendrickson will give him a respite on the request. He can't go to the sideline, though. No, he can't. And they're getting him back out there. And he did the right thing. No, it is not legal to go to the sideline. You can't do that. The only problem with doing this, the only problem for a quarterback doing this, and he is young, this is his first, uh, his third game, it's the fourth game that he has started. Now when he goes up there, it's going to get worse. Yeah, sure. You're in a hostile environment, you're on the road, I always like to get up there, and even if it was loud, get the first one off and act like you don't hear him, even though you do. Now he's just going to make it worse. Gary Henderson is telling him now, go call us now. Go ahead and motion. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mark Ferry almost had his second interception of the day, and if he catches it, it's six. Because well, there ain't nobody. No question. Wait. It was a fourth down play, and Fry's main concern was on the crowd. He was worried more about the crowd than he was about the play. Take a look at it here. Ferry is 21. He sees it the whole way and makes a nice effort. Almost all the way. I mean, there's nothing between Mark Ferry and the other end of the field except a lot of fresh Indiana air. All Hoosiers at Columbus, Indiana, finally broke a shadow, breaking a 31-game winless streak against Ohio State. It was a big day, a 31-10 Indiana victory, and Buckeye coach Earl Bruce said this. It's got to be uh, the darkest day I've seen in Ohio State football since I've been associated with it. You'll hear any dark day comments out of that man. First place, oh, John is hot right now. Yeah. And secondly, he's a fighter, boy. He went to Tulsa. He took that program and turned it around. The last five years he was there, he won consecutive Missouri Valley Conference championships. And as it, you uh, chronicled, uh, he went on to Arizona State, took it to the Rose Bowl, and won that. So he'll turn it around. On first down for Indiana. Here comes Mr. Thompson. And he can add 10 more yards to it. 29 carries, 163 yards, four touchdowns. Now the career touchdown leader at Indiana. The NCAA record, if you're interested, for rushing touchdowns in a game is seven. Arnold Showboat Boykin. Old Miss did it in 1951. How do I know that? Because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> On first down, it goes back to Thompson. He isn't tired. And 13 more. Eight o'clock tonight, Eastern Time. Boston Red Sox and the Oakland Athletics have their game three out west. The A's took the first two at Fenway. The Sox have got some problems. From the 38, another first down for the Hoosiers. Snell to throw. Dave goes underneath that little sidearm action. And he pops it into the arms of Tim Jordan, senior from Westchester, Ohio. You know, we may have two of the best tight ends in the Big Ten in this ball game today. Jordan came in with ten receptions and one touchdown. And for the for the Ohio State Buckeyes, Jeff Ellis led his team in receptions coming in with 14. Jordan catching four on the day. It's amazing. How many times have you ever seen a tight end hold for extra points and field goals? This is the first time I've ever seen one. Ever seen Jordan, Jordan, you know, I've seen a lot of them long snap uh, for uh, punts and placements, but never a uh, holder. Snell has had a very efficient day. 9 of 11, 114 yards and a touchdown. And here goes Anthony Thompson again. All the way down to the Ohio State 40. 12 more yards. That offensive line 
is really doing a job. Let's take a look at the offensive line. Varco is the center, number 50. Schrader, 77. And Radke, nice block by the fullback, Boyd. And when you've got blocking like that up front, you're going to get some yardage. But, uh, you know, Thompson is good for that line because he sets up their blocks when they're running wide. That line is also good for Thompson. Better the system, isn't it? Yeah, make the system to fit the people. That's what he's done. Thompson tries to turn the corner. We'll get a couple of yards on that carry. Dumas got a hold of it and slowed him down. And here's Mike Adderley, who once ran 42 times against Indiana in a 21-7 Northwestern win. All right. Keith, you want to know one of the reasons why Indiana's a winner? It's because of Indi uh, innovations like this one. Defensive coordinator Joe Novak awards players who have big games on Saturdays these jerseys during the course of the week to wear during the course of the week. Safety Mark Ferry and tackle Doug Schlereth both were awarded these jerseys last week. Proudly displayed the words no easy way for their bone jarring work against Northwestern a week ago. It's going to be tough to find the Indiana big hitters this week. There are so many of them. I give one to Ferry again. Uh, yeah. He's been all over the lot. Schnell throws that one away. He was, uh, the play action didn't work. Ohio State had his people covered, and he dumped it in the seats. Incomplete forward pass. Oklahoma defeating Texas 28-13 in their annual. And here, with 9 minutes and 20 seconds to play, Indiana beating up, and I think that's a fair phrase, on Ohio State 35-7. They have been totally bummed. Led at halftime, 28-0. Third and eight. Touchdown. Well, going big. Got a man. Touchdown. The Hoosiers. No flags. Rob Turner. It is incomplete. But here's a circumstance where you might have had the new rule jump up because here's your tight end running around with a ball. The new rule says if you intercept or block a kick, the defense can return it for two points, and there you almost had an interception. Let's go back to the touchdown. Watch the blitz. Both linebackers are coming. When you blitz, there's nobody in the deep center field to help any of the corners. Turner beat the outside corner down the field and made an easy touchdown. Turner almost didn't play this week, had a severe uh, leg bruise last week. They thought it may have been a uh, fractured leg. Just across the way from the stadium is Assembly Hall, where inside hangs five of these national basketball championship banners. 40, 53, 76, 81, and 87. I'll be surprised if we see any more of AT today. Yeah, maybe not. He's close to 200. 914 to play in a ball game. 41 7. Indiana now. It was 31 10 last year. This is Bobby Ali. Fumbles the ball. Indiana's got it. And who's got it? Mark Ferry. Mark Ferry. Gotta give him that t-shirt again this week. Mike was talking about. Take another look. Olive trying to make something happen. The ball knocked out right there, and it just seems like there's some guys that are always right there to recover the ball, and Martin Ferry is having an outstanding day. So 
from the 27 now. Indiana will go to work. And Tom Bolliard is in that quarterback for the first time today. Tom getting some play. He's been doing the punting. Keeps it himself. And gets his feet wet for the carry. On the first snap, Mark Politi brought him down. Mark is a sophomore out of Youngstown, Ohio, for the Buckeyes. So Tom Bolliard, who at one time was at Columbus, now a junior at Indiana. He's from Orville, Ohio. His dad Barry was Way is in it, tailback and Gene Boyd, the fullback. Excuse me. I was just going to say, uh, Tom Boyard's father was an All-American basketball player. All Big Ten, I guess. Maybe he was All-American. Made All Big Ten, I know, at Indiana. Was it Jimmy Rail? This is Barry Way carrying. He is from Lawrenceburg, Indiana. And Ohio State arguing they've got it and they do. Peel comes out of there with it. Jimmy Peel from Beaver Falls, PA. Peel was the leading tackler on this Ohio State team coming into the ball game. And uh, they did a few uh, defensive shifts in the secondary, and he didn't start, but is making the most of his opportunity when he gets in there. Tripped up. I couldn't see if the ball came out before he was down or not, but whatever, it's over to Ohio State. Take a look at the line surge here for Indiana. This is that counter trap play that they use. Good penetration. I think the ball was loose. That's Mark Hicks now in at tailback for Ohio State. And he gets the carry from the 16 up to about the 18. That's the story we gave you a long time ago. That goes back to the first half. <laughs> it's been a busy day for AT. You know the thing that, that I'm impressed with, not all of his stats, but in talking with uh, George Ballou, the offensive coordinator for Indiana, he says he's just a nice kid. He works hard. He's a good kid to have around the program. Greg Fry misses. Pass intended for Jeff Graham. You know, when Bill Mallory played at Ohio, Miami of Ohio, Eric Parsegan was his coach for three years. John Punt, the senior, he played both ways. He coached with Bo under uh, Woody Hayes later on at Ohio State. So uh, Bowling Green, Yale, and Ohio State. Dort Perry, Carmen Cusa, and Woody Hayes. Yeah. yeah. So he's been with Aaron, he's been with uh, Bo, and he's been with Woody Hayes. And, you know, I think he coaches a lot like, uh, like they would, uh, would have liked it. I know he, his philosophy is a lot like Bo Schembechler. Drop off underneath, goes to John, uh, to Mark Hicks. And Mark Hicks will have a first down. For Ohio State, just over the 30. And we've got 7.28 to play in the ball game. You know, talking about Mallory, Keith, uh, you say he coaches a lot like Bo. He likes defense, he likes special teams, and he likes the running game. Holding penalty against Indiana. But his oldest son, Mallory's oldest son, graduated from Michigan as a co-captain of the football team, and his middle son, Doug, who is a graduate assistant now here at Indiana, was also at Michigan as a co-captain for Bo Schembechler. His youngest son, Kurt, who just graduated, was an All-State player here in Bloomington last year, has gone up to play for Bo at, uh, at Michigan also. Tells you a little bit about the respect for uh, Michigan and Bo Schembechler that the Mallory's have. Crowd now is starting to leave, and they only started to go at about eight minutes because uh, this just hasn't happened in the relationship <laughs> of these two teams over the years. It was 31-10 down at Columbus last year. Well, there's only been four years that the Hoosiers had won eight games or more, and last year was one of them, so this is totally new for them. Fly on the move, throws it into the crowd, incomplete. So young Greg is really going to have to sit down. 
do some thinking over the next few hours. Because he has had a hard day. As we near the end of today's game, we'll pick the Chevrolet most valued player of the game for each of the teams, with Chevrolet donating a thousand dollar scholarship in each player's name to their respective universities. I think the Indiana choice is pretty obvious. I can tell you who that is now. Anthony Thompson. Greg Fry's pass is batted right back to him. Jim Sam. Sam's have been bunged up a bit. He's back healthy. He's the best defensive lineman of the, all the Hoosiers. Far left of your screen, number 91. You said has missed a couple of games with injuries. Is their best defensive lineman, their quickest. Getting an opportunity to get some playing time in here today. Gets his hands up and knocks it down. He's a senior. Greg could have caught it and won. So many of these other defensive players for Indiana. We saw Chris Chandler do that last year, remember? Yep. All batted back to him, caught it, ran 50 yards. That's a pretty good grab on the sidelines by Jeff Graham. Falling out of bounds, hauled it in in time. Graham is their starting wide receiver, and he's in there playing now because he was a prop, Proposition 48 player. It means his grades weren't good enough last year to, to play on the team, so he had to go to school, qualify, and not work out with the ball club. And that's, that's the type of I meaning. So Ohio State did not have him in camp until this summer and really didn't know how good he was. First down after 48. long down the middle intended for Jeff Ellis post pattern and again Ohio State is one of the few teams you'll see throw that ball deep down to the tight end well the Trojans are handling Oregon huh? 24 to nothing both teams undefeated coming into that I'm a little bit surprised maybe unless uh, the quarterback for Oregon uh, what's his name Wilhelm no it's a Musgrave 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 Wilhelm's at Oregon State right one of the things in the history of that series though uh, Bob is Oregon very seldom plays well in, in the south yeah. in Coliseum. Yeah. Well, on the other hand they give uh, USC fits at the museum oh look at that stuff Marquette trying to find some room and there is nothing there most of that first team uh, defensive unit still in there is Honeycutt. Brian Honeycutt, 96 out there. Dumas, Perry, DeWitt, Holden, Bates, Honey. I remember one time O.J. Simpson, USC, went up to Oregon State. Played on the grass field on that day. Earthquake in, had some 50 carries, and they beat the Cajuns through the nothing. It works both ways out on that side. Playing here in the Big Ten's no bargain when you got to go on the road. I'll tell you that is picked off. Ball thrown behind the receiver again, and Brad Money has the interception, and that's five turnovers for Ohio State. That's Money's Money's third interception on the year. He's played an outstanding game today. At 6:09 to play in the ball game, the Hoosiers have the ball at their own 39. Has taken care of all this business about not being able to win at home. You weren't with us at the beginning of the game. It's been since 1904 since Indiana won a game here in Bloomington. I think it's safe to say that that uh, that ghost has, has has left the stadium. Yes, against Ohio State, of course, we're yeah, talking about Ohio State. Hoosiers eight and four last year went to a bowl. They certainly look like a bowl team again this year, don't they? Certainly do. First down from the 39. Carrying the ball, Barry Way. And he picks up four. And Notre Dame Pittsburgh now 17 17 in the third quarter. So the Panthers are a bit of an up and down team this year, but at home they can be dynamite. The Irish have a tough schedule. Year in and year out have had a tough schedule. Yep. They have uh, some tough games coming up. We'll have them later on in the year at uh, Southern Cal. 
a Thanksgiving weekend, isn't it? UCLA, Oregon State are playing out on the West Coast. In case you're wondering about a Bruins score, they play late. At five o'clock. Second down and six. Tom Bolliard, the quarterback, gives to Barry Way, coming around the corner and gets the first down. Just over the Ohio State 48. Looking down the schedule, and uh, that game next week, uh, Michigan and Iowa will be uh, that'll be a significant game in the, uh, in the Big Ten circumstance. I think the two the two prominent teams right now, obviously, are Indiana and Michigan. With Michigan's win today over Michigan State, but uh, with Michigan going into Iowa, old Hayden Fry may say, "Wait a minute, I want to do something about this and get uh, get our guys back in this fight." First down with the Hoosiers. They stay with the ground game as Way will go to the 45. The team, however, that's jumped up here all of a sudden to win two consecutive conference games after a bit of a stumbling start is Illinois. You see uh, the Illini sitting up there with two, two and oh, Michigan two and oh. Indiana is about to become two and oh. And uh, Iowa is undefeated. Yep. So if they can knock off Michigan, uh, and they, of course, will face uh, Indiana later on, they could be right there, too. And the game is here, October 29th. Second down, long seven. Fullback gets a call, Gene Boyd. And Boyd, a 235-pounder, will bump his way down to about the 41. The uh, comment that uh, Bill Mallory made yesterday was their first effort in recruiting players, just like it is at Ohio State, is to recruit the home territory. He likes the high school quality of football here in the state of Indiana, and of course everybody likes the quality of high school football in Ohio because everybody goes over there and recruits. Yeah, Michigan has always gone down into Ohio and recruited, and I think if you're going to have a successful program you've got to recruit in your own area and, and do it well and obviously Mallory has Al Trotwig will have scores and highlights of the games and there were two stunners down in the Southeastern Conference today Florida losing Alabama losing it'll be third down and four now for the Hoosiers Keeping is firmly in the grasp of Shreko Zizakovic, <laughs> outside linebacker of Ohio State. There's Jeff Fryer, offensive right tackle, and one of the starters for Indiana. And really, the story of this ball game has been that offensive line. He was a high school quarterback and a place kicker. Uh, in fact, he was the All-State place kicker. Weighed at 220 when he was in high school. As a freshman, he came in. He kept growing. He moved him to tight end. He kept growing. Moved him to defensive end. Finally, to offensive tackle. He's 6'6 and weighs 280. Have you ever heard of a, a quarterback or a place kicker ending up as an offensive tackle? On fourth down, they go for it. And they get it as Barry Way slices his way. Behind the left guard and tackle all the way down to the Ohio State 32. And the Buckeye defensive people now are getting very tired. John Cooper just shaking his head saying, you know, this ain't this ain't what I expected when I came to Ohio State. But uh, knowing John Cooper as we do, this is uh, this is not going to be the standard. This is going to be the exception. What an outstanding job Mallory has done over the years. First year winning no games, and then two, and six, and an eight. Hey, this fellow Way's got a tricky little gait, doesn't he? He's, he kind of got, to, he has those feet going all ways until he makes up his mind and makes his cut. And today on the ground with uh, Thompson's big day, the Hoosiers have run for 307 yards on 55 carries. 
This young man doesn't get a chance to play very often, I would imagine. That's pretty cute. Just under two minutes to go in the ball game now. Well, he's got it again and a penalty flag. We have not had all that many penalties. We had one situation where we had two penalty calls against Ohio State in an Indiana possession of the first half, and it was 20 yard assist as the Hoosiers went ahead to the touchdown. Holding, and it's against Indiana. Indiana. And now this crowd of better than 52,000 starting to go home. Excuse me, Keith. I was just going to say Indiana came into this game leading the Big Ten in total offense. Holding against the Hoosiers. Also leading in, in rushing offense, scoring offense, and first and third down efficiency. So their offense has been right on schedule as far as Mallory is concerned. And for uh, John Cooper, his offense was 10th coming into this ball game, and uh, kind of tells you about the score. 41 to 7. Second down and 13. Way works his way back down to the 30. And the Hoosiers stay with the ground game. They has no particular interest in running up the score. <laughs> what did Bo said last week after they got 62 against Wisconsin? He said, somebody scored 62 points for me, I wouldn't invite him to my Christmas party either. <laughs> it was Don Morton, the coach at Wisconsin, says, you know, he, he didn't run up the score. He was, he was pulling back. Well, you get a rolling sometimes, and it just goes on. You certainly ain't going to tell a young fellow to go out there and don't try. Well, it's a tough situation. These kids that are on there now want to do well for Indiana. They're in there. They want to run. Carrying the ball, Gene Boyd. And Boyd on third down is short of his first down, and they'll probably run it again. And I with think half a minute to go. I think you should let him play. I think the quarterback should throw the ball, and uh, the back should run hard. He's uh, uh, our player of the game right there. We'll talk to Anthony Thompson, who had a big day today for 190 yards. Mike Adam is going to visit with him as the clock heads toward its final second. And number 72 for Indiana. Got a little anxious and jumped offside on the right side, making contact. It's encroachment by the offense, offside by the defense. Davey Nelson tells me that 40 times a year, and I never remember it, except once in a great while. Three seconds. Left to play in the ball game. Bill's going to get a ride today. A resounding puppet. 31 to 10 last year, 41 to 7 this year. The Indiana Hoosiers have defeated the Ohio State Buckeyes on their home field before a crowd of 52,133. State, Evan Bob. How long has it been? since they tore the goalpost down at Indiana. Well, today is one of those days, and here's Mike Adam Lee. How sweet it was. Our play of the game, Anthony Thompson, unofficially 32 carries, 190 yards, four touchdowns, which is a, a school career record for touchdowns. A.T., what a performance, and I know you're going to thank the Hogs, the offensive line. Oh, yeah, they've been blocking, you know, our well this year, and, you know, I just can't say enough for them. They've been a good offensive line for me this year. Did you realize you were in such a groove early on? No, I didn't. I didn't know we had 100. Somebody told me we had 120 yards at halftime. You know, that's a great, you know, I hold off the offensive line. They really bite well this year. Before the game, Coach Mallory preached pride and play with feeling. You did. Oh, yeah. Everybody, you know, Coach Mallory gives it pep talk. He really knows how to fire us up, and we did a great job coming out first half. A.T., congratulations. Coach, 84 years, Indiana has waited a long time for this moment. Right. You know, we made history today, and it's great feel. It's nice thing about it is we came right back and did it again. The thing is now, keep this Big Ten momentum going. 2-0 doesn't mean much. Again, we have to take them one at a time, and that means, again, next week we have to be ready for another tough one. That's the way the league is, but it's challenging. So, what we're happy about today. Okay, Coach, congratulations. Keith, Bob? Thanks very much, Mike. The MVP, Chevrolet, is giving a $1,000 award to each of the university's general scholarship funds in the name of James Bryant of Ohio State and, of course, Anthony Thompson of Indiana. 
tonight in Bloomington as Indiana beats Ohio State 41-7. Tonight on ABC Sports, the Boston Red Sox and the Oakland A's. Game three of the American League Championship Series. And tomorrow, the battle goes on. Red Sox and A's, game four. ABC's College Football has been brought to you by Honda, who invites you to test drive the Accord LXI four-door sedan at your local Honda dealership today. By Michelob, one taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelob. And by Pert Plus, shampoo plus complete conditioner in one, so you just wash and go. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. A promotional fee has been paid.